financial considerations and, and they may be many for you or they may be very few. But we encourage you to look at some of these programs that exist for you once you roll into this active duty status, 30 continuous days of active duty coming up, to look at what's available to you. Because SCRA is not automatic prior to deployment, service members must contact Legal Assistance Office for information about it and how it applies to that service member and his or her family. So that's definitely a call you need to make on your checklist. Regarding taxes, uh, if you're in the military or naval services on duty outside of the U.S. in Puerto Rico, not in the combat zone, on the due date of your income tax return, you're allowed an automatic two-month extension to file your income tax return. It's automatic. The automatic extension, it's not an extension of time to pay any tax owed by the regular due date. So if you don't end up paying that you know, with um, a solid estimate of what you would owe if you're going to owe something, it's going to be important to have gotten that in because obviously you're going to get um, interest on that owed and sometimes there's an additional fine on top of the interest. If you're in a combat zone, the deadlines for, um, for filling your tax return, paying any tax you may owe, and filing a claim for refund is automatically extended in 180 days. And the remaining time you have left to file your taxes when you enter the combat zone. So um, obviously the first thing you need to figure out is, is where you're going, technically considered a combat zone, to know which of those you qualify for. Uh, filing taxes generally requires a specific power of attorney. So if you don't know about that and, and you want to get that done while you're before you're back, um, you know you're going to need a specific power of attorney for that specifically. SDP will pay 10% interest on monies up to $10,000 deposited during deployment and for three months after leaving theater. Um, it's important to understand that that cannot technically begin until um, you know you're in theater. Any military finance office in theater can help service members establish that. An account, um, assist in setting up the deposit method most convenient for the service member. So um, really all you have to do in advance of the deployment is make the decision of if you're going to do it or not so that you know you have your ducks in a row and you're ready to um, meet with a finance officer right when you get to theater to go ahead and start that start that uh, auto withdrawal um, deposit into your SDP. This 10% is you know really a lot of money. That's a that's an interest rate that you're really not going to find, um, especially you know in the times we're in. FSA provides compensation for added expenses incurred because of uh, an enforced family separation under one of the following conditions though. Transportation of dependents is not authorized at government expense and the dependents do not live in the vicinity of your per permanent duty station. So let me say that again. Transportation of dependents is not authorized at government expense and the dependents do not live in the vicinity of your permanent duty station. So this is one of the following uh, conditions you know for the FSA to provide compensation. Transportation of dependents is authorized at government expense but you have selected an unaccompanied tour of duty because a dependent cannot accompany you to the permanent station due to certain or certified actually medical reasons. So that is um, another condition to be considered. FSA provides if you're on duty aboard a ship and the ship is away from the home port continuously for more than 30 days or, and here's the final potential condition, you're on temporary duty, TDY, or temporary additional duty away from the permanent station continuously for more than 30 days and your dependents are not residing at or near the TDY station. Um, you know, a lot of this language may not apply because deployments are changing so much in the so FSA is payable at the rate of $250 per month, prorated to $833 per day for periods less than a month. So like if it spills over, you know, into the next month. To apply for FSA, you should submit a completed DD form 1561-1561 1561 
statement to substantial payment of FSA, that's what it's called, to your servicing personnel office. Again, if you are going to apply for FSA, and there are these specific conditions that I stated earlier, and you can look those up to reconfirm those four, you have to submit a form DD-1561, which is called the Statement to Substantial Payment of FSA. If you have an emergency or are short on funds, consider that each service provides the benefit of interest-free loans and grants from military aid societies. So um, before you put yourself in any kind of excessive financial burden, and the military will become aware of it if you end up uh, with uh, unpaid bills or unpaid loans, you know, there's a way to do this with military aid society support.